Hello again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this. Now this is a Maxatov Cassegrain telescope. Uh, this particular model is a Skywatcher Skymax 180. Now normally with Maxatovs they just get referred to as a Mac uh, then followed by the aperture. So this one being a 180 aperture we'd normally just refer to this as a Mac 180. Now what I'm going to do is a brief review of this, um, just show you how the, the Mac design works and also just show you a little modification on it. So let's just take a look at it in close up. Okay, if we take a look at the front of the scope, the first thing you'll notice is there's a great big lens on the front of there. The Mac is almost a cross between a refractor and a reflecting telescope. Now this, this lens is, is called a meniscus and what it is, it's, it's very, very concave and it's made to correct uh, the sort of errors that you would normally get with a Newtonian such as a chromatic aberration or a coma and for that reason it's often referred to as a corrector plate. Now the Mac doesn't have a, a secondary in the sort of sense of the word of uh, what you would expect with Newtonians. What it does have is there's a circle inside that meniscus that is that's silvered that acts as sort of a fixed secondary mirror. Now if we look down the tube you can see that there's a primary in there. Now that primary has a hole through the middle of it. So what happens is that when we look through the scope we're actually looking through a hole in the in the in the primary mirror. The way that it works is that the light comes in at the front of the telescope, comes down to the primary mirror goes back up again to that reflective secondary and then goes down a tube on the inside leading out to the eyepiece so it's, it's often what we call a folded design telescope because it folds the light several times what that means is that on the 180 that's the equivalent of having a telescope 2700 millimeters long um, that's the focal length of the Mac 180 which equates to a, an f15 telescope now what that means is that it's very very good for planetary and lunar viewing it just gives very very high contrast and lovely sharp images um, and I, to be honest I wouldn't recommend this as a first telescope it's, it's the reason why I bought it is because if you're imaging with you know whichever scope that you're using either a refractor or a reflector uh, for a lot of the time because you're exposing for hours on end you, you sat there twiddling your thumbs and, and with not a lot to do so I bought this purely and simply that I've now got something that I can be doing whilst my other scope is, is imaging um, so as I said I wouldn't recommend this as a first scope um, you know you much better probably going with it the smaller Macs are fine for a beginner but the, the bigger one like this then you know it's, it's just a little bit too specialised um, on to a brief review of this particular model the, uh, the Skywatcher 180 one thing I don't like about it, well actually there are two, um, the first thing is the quality of the diagonal on the, on the Skymax 180 isn't very good at all. I found that if I took the diagonal off my ED80 scope, which is also a 2 inch diagonal, and fitted that on, it actually increased the, the, the views uh, quite a lot, there was a, a marked difference. So I think that Skywatch really need to add a, a better quality diagonal to the, to the Mac 180. The second thing that is a niggle more than anything else, it's just something I don't like, is that the Mac is fixed to the mount by having a Vixen style dovetail that's bolted directly to the tube and I don't like it to be honest, not in a bigger scope, I'd much rather see rings um, on, on the 180, I mean it's fine on the, on the smaller Macs but this is quite a heavy scope and I just don't think it's solid enough uh, just to be able to have two bolts fixing a, a dovetail through a piece of thin steel tube. Now a lot of people struggle with the Max with the focus inside and we're going to show you a mod to do with that very shortly. Um, normally when you focus a Mac you have a knob on the back here. Now what this does is it's what we would call a raw focus because it actually depends on moving the actual telescope elements to focus. So that primary mirror in there is, is on a threaded bar. As we turn the focus the, the primary mirror moves up and down the tube. Now it's quite a coarse um, focusing method and a lot of people do struggle with, with focusing a Mac. Um, you know you see it on the forums all the time, I've got this Mac, is it broken, I can't focus it. Um, the main thing is that this is just far too coarse and, and like I said people struggle with it. What many people will do with it is 
that they will fit. Um, a lot of people view such as a, a, a toy wheel off a, off a toy car that's a bigger diameter that will fit over this knob and it just gives you that little bit of more fine control. Other people have just used a, a clothes peg, you know, a, a washing saw, a clothes peg and clipped that on because it gives like a lever then and again it just gives you a more finer control over, over that focusing. But there is a better way and for that you will need a couple of things. What you need is firstly you will need an SCT focuser, sort of a third party SCT focuser such as this one. Now this is actually a Skywatcher one and Skywatcher third party focusers actually tend to be a, quite a bit better quality than the ones that they build onto the, the scopes such as the refractors and reflectors. Purely and simply because at the end of the day Skywatcher are built into a budget and you know just corners have got to be cut in, in certain places to hit a price mark. Um, the third party focusers by Skywatch are actually very, very good. Um, like I said, this is a Skywatcher SCT focuser. Now this one, I've actually fitted a motor onto it. You don't get this motor with it. That's, um, you know, my own motor that I've, I've put on there. The other thing that you will need is an adapter like this. Now these, as far as I know, are only available from one place at the moment in the UK and that's a company called Astrotech and I will put up the URL for, for these adapters. Now what we do is this, if you have a look on the back of the Mac, uh, we're doing a little bit of poetry as well, the back of the Mac, you can unscrew this section eventually like so and that just takes away the, the adapter and, the, and the, the full diagonal and everything. What we do next is we take the adapter and that screws directly onto what we call the visual back on the scope. So we screw that on They're quite a fine thread so you know be very careful that you don't actually cross thread them. There we go. Just do that up sort of hand tight. Next, take the SCT focuser and offer that up to the threads on the adapter. Like so. Now this particular focuser, you can see the silver ring there that I'm using to tighten up. There's a small knob here and this is actually a rotatable focuser so that I can position it wherever I want. Now you may find with some low profile focusers, if you're not careful, you will foul the, the knob, the focusing knob on the on the Mac. And you know, that's something you don't want to be doing. You don't want to be, want to be fouling your knob. Um, so once this focuser is in position, let's just tighten everything up. What you do now is you use the focuser knob of the Mac to roughly focus. This is only just used as a rough focus now. Then you find focus with your aftermarket SCT focuser. And it's just a very, very worthwhile mod to do on a Mac, especially on the bigger ones. It just improves the performance 100%. Uh, because as I said, they can be an absolute struggle to focus. Another disadvantage with the Mac is that the cooldown time is quite long because it's what we call a sealed design uh, and it's, it's much more advisable if you do have a Mac to keep it in an outbuilding or a shed if you've got one as opposed to keeping one uh, in the house because you know you're looking at at least two hour cooldown for uh, for a 180. Um, now if you're keeping it in an outbuilding in a previous video we have covered desiccant caps that can be fitted to the back of, um, of sealed design scopes uh, in fact, there is actually one in here at the moment, which is this, uh, and that is highly recommended if you are keeping it in an outbuilding. And that's it for this one, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And once again, thanks for watching.